Very warm welcome to all of you from the independent studios of ds and coming to you from Preston. My name's Jan Bears and I'll be with you right through the following programmes which I know you're all going to enjoy. We'll be featuring programmes about local history, music, quiz programmes and many other very interesting films sure to please both the old and younger viewers. To start off with then, here's a programme in our local history series and it's all about a very well known and respected landmark of Preston, the Lane Ends Hotel. Preston in Lancashire with its miles of docks along the River Ribble. In this great centre of commerce and trade, many changes have taken place in recent years, keeping Preston bang up to date with progress and development. A glance around the city reveals both modern and historical architecture in close proximity, allowing Preston the advantages of being a go-ahead city with the beauty of ancient backgrounds. The historical architecture is very prominent, with many impressive mill buildings which reflect the bygone days of the Industrial Revolution. The tall, now disused chimneys serve as a reminder of Preston's past role as a major textile centre. Sadly, however, this is no longer the case. With the advent of modern road building techniques, Preston now stands at the centre of a wide network of motorways and major roads, making the city possibly the most accessible in the northwest of England and placing Preston on a par with other major cities like Liverpool, Manchester, Leeds and Birmingham. The Albert Edward Dock, once a thriving major port and oil refinery, has finally lost its battle against the recession and sadly has to close down, resulting in thousands of lost jobs and important trading links with overseas countries. It is a relief to note, therefore, that in these hard times, pleasure and enjoyment have up to now remained unaffected. And with this in mind, our story now takes us to the intersection of four busy major roads of the city, where good times and companionship have always been the order of the day. An emporium of enjoyment so totally notorious for its mind-boggling atmosphere that it was once affectionately referred to as the Bermuda Triangle of the North. Progress, however, has not missed one square inch of Preston and this haven of pleasure sadly must fall in with the trend. ds and have the greatest of pleasure in dedicating this program to all who know and love this great monument to real ale drinkers. This is the story of the Lane Ends Hotel. I'm now standing outside the Lane Ends Hotel and I would like to have a word with the landlord, Mr. Gerald Woodward. And a very good afternoon to you, Jed. Good afternoon. And a beautiful day as well. It is, yes. Now lovely. then, can we first of all have a look back at the history of the Lane Ends Hotel and tell me what you know about it? Yeah, well, um, what I know about it is it dating back to the 18th century. 
when a family called the Prestons had it, who used to do a, an own brew. So they actually brewed their own beer? They brewed their own beer, yeah. Um, the, the name of the brew was Preston. Uh, then it was taken over some years later by Boddington's, um, consequently carrying on from there. I see. So Boddington's have been here for over a century? Yeah, yeah. Marvellous. Okay, so what of the future of the lane ends? Now, I believe the builders have just started to move in and uh, they are going to do extensive alterations. Yeah, they're in now and uh, the alterations at the moment are tied to upstairs, but they're coming down into the pub and they're going to open it, open it up into two big rooms, trying not to ruin the character. I see, so the bar is going to move? Yeah, the bar, well, there's going to be two bars. One in the position it's in now and one further up the, up the pub itself. I see. And uh, obviously the uh, Lane End's a very, very popular pub. But what do you count to its popularity? Well, Boddington's beer and good management. Well, it's very, very clear that this is happening all the time. Well, Jed, we wish you all the very best for the future. Uh, we'll go and have a look inside, shall we? If you will, please. Yeah, thanks very much. Thank you, Jed. All the best. Bye. Bye. Okay, now down in the beer cellars, Jed. Uh, yeah. Now then, how many pints of beer do you keep down here? Uh, well, that's an hard question. Okay, how many barrels? I keep... Uh, 28 at a time on stillage. 28 barrels? Yeah. That's... How many of that's bitter? Uh, that's all bitter now. It's all? Yeah, we've, ah. we've, we've decided not to sell any more mild. We're just selling Why is that? Well, there's not a great demand for it, so what I was doing was taking up still, stillage space for a yeah. couple of barrels a mild. Yeah. Well, I might as well have the bitter on, you see, with yeah, there being a demand for it. So there's 28 barrels? There's 28 in the cell at any given at time. At any time? Yeah. yeah. That's marvellous. So how many pints in a barrel? Well, then you work it out, you've got 244 pints to the barrel. So there's a lot of pints so of beer. Awful lot of beer being... Smashing. And, of course, it's very cool down here as well. Very cool, yeah. Um, I can hear a sound of a fan or something. Is that the cooling system? The coolers, system? yeah. It's, actually, it's a very, very good cellar. It's, uh, it's, it's damp, it's humid, and it's good for the beer. Mm. The coolers just put the edge on it. And it always maintains this con constant never, temperature. Never goes up above this. That's never. fabulous. Um, and what about the lager? Is there any lager down here? Yeah, that... lager's over in that corner. It's, um, it's not like Boddington's. Boddington's no. is, is traditional. A lager's just straightforward uh, that's, CO2. That's a keg, so, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you can't do any you can't do any harm to that. You're just stuck in the corner and you use it and put a new one on when it goes. Now, are there any proposals to change any of the cellar down here? Yeah, this is going to be, as it is now, there's one cellar there one behind you yeah. and one over to the left there. That's three cellars, which are all going to be made into one big one. I see. Which I should be able to hold double the amount of beer. So but, you'll have 56? Yeah, I'll have 56, but they won't be barrels, they'll be hogsheads. Now, what's the difference? Now, a barrel holds 36 gallon and a hogshead holds 54 gallons. So you're going to have a hell of a lot more beer. Yeah, so we'll have more beer in here. Where, at the moment, I'm on two deliveries a week, Monday and Friday. Yeah. So I'll be able to go to one delivery. And when will that be? Just well, that, one day That'll a week? be on a Monday, yeah. Oh, that's fabulous. And you hope you don't run out? Mm, well, we won't run out. We'll have that much beer, yeah. <laughs> Smashing. Thanks for letting us have a look in the cellar, Jim. You're welcome. You're welcome. Mysterious and lugubrious indeed is the deserted interior of the Lane Ends. But add that magical touch of people, humour, and that happy swilling and gurgling sound of Boddington's best bitter, and you're in for a real surprise. <laughs> 